Hello friends, good afternoon, one and all. Here I am Gadekar Sachin Pandit. Today we are discuss on paper CHA 392. Okay. So last lecture we are discuss on HPLC instrumentation of HPLC. There different components we are discuss such as reservoir, uh, gas pump, different types of pump. Okay, so then <coughs> mixing chamber, types of separation in HPLC. So <coughs> different topics we are discuss in last lecture. Today we are discuss on pump system in HPLC okay so different types of pumps are used such as constant flow rate pump and constant pressure pump okay so step by step we are discuss and then discuss a detector different types of detectors are used in this HPLC technique so next we are discuss a differentiate uh, detector and lastly advantages of HPLC. So now we are talking about the type, uh, types of pump HPLC. First they classify in two categories. Different types of pumps are used in HPLC. There are two types. First is the constant flow rate okay and second is the constant pressure pump again constant flow rate types of pump classify in two categories okay first is the displacement pump and second is the reciprocating uh, reciprocating pump Okay, so this reciprocating pumps are three types. First is the single piston and second is the double piston type pump and then a reciprocating <coughs> diffragm types of pumps are used. Okay, so these two types of pumps are used for a constant flow rate of our <coughs> solvent mobile phase okay in which our compound so next is the maintain the constant pressure okay so that's why we use a constant pressure pump okay those, uh, those are the numeric types of pump okay and they direct pressure pump they use as direct pressure pump and second is the amplifier pump Okay, so direct pump, uh, pressure pump means applying pressure is directly, okay, so constant flow rate of the pressure and then amplifying pump is sometime lower pressure will be increased, amplified, so that's time we use a amplifier pump, okay, so these are the two types of pump, first is the constant flow rate pump and second is the constant pressure maintained pump okay so we are discuss briefly here displacement pump okay displacement pump it consists of large serine like chamber equipped with puncture active activated by screw uh, screw diode and mecha uh, mechanism powered by stripping motor okay so these series are equipped with punjar and these operated by screw driver so it is also called as screw driver serine types of pump okay so these are the two ad uh, advantages and some disadvantages of this displacement pump so first of all advantages what is the advantages of displacement of pump 
okay it produce flow that tends to be independent viscosity and back pressure okay means displacement pump is depends on the in depends on the viscosity and <coughs> back pressure of the solute mobile phase and this disadvantages it is a limited solvent capacity solvent capacity near about 20 to, uh, 250 microliter and considerably <coughs> in an inconvenient when solvent must be changed okay so this is the disadvantages of displacement pump so second is the reciprocating pump reciprocating pump these pumps transmit alternative pressure okay and there are two types of uh, reciprocating pump and also diaphragm types of pumps are also used in this reciprocating pump okay so this transmit alternative pressure to the solvent via flexible diaphragm use okay so sometime we use a hydraulically pumped by reciprocation pump okay so what is the disadvantages of this reciprocating pump first is the it produce pulse from which damp because it produce noise on chromatogram okay so this uh, this propagating pump is <coughs> disadvantages because in it produce a noise on the chromatogram okay so this can be overcome by using dual pump okay head and the minimize such such pulse station okay so this diagram shows the reciprocating pump okay so here motors are used and two check valves are present and these check valves transfer the solvent or our mobile phase okay so this in this transformation of mobile phase they produce a noise that's why we have used a double <coughs> we have use a double pump okay so second is represented in diagrammatically solvent is pumped back and forth by the motor drive piston okay so double pistons are also used in this uh, because reduce the my uh, noise to in chromatogram okay two ball check valves which open and close with controls the flow okay the piston is direct contact with the solvent that's why they reduce <coughs> the flow rate okay so small internal wall volume, volume near about 35 to 400 microliter okay internal mobile phase volume okay so like uh, mobile phase internal volume near about 35 to 400 microliters and high output pressure up to 10000 pascal okay so this is the advantages of this <coughs> pump and ready to uh, adaptability to gradient elution and constant flow rate okay so here represent in diagrammatically motors and reciprocating pump okay there are two single piston pump with the slow filling cycle first in represented by e line a line and second is the b line b line single piston pump with a rapid filling cycle okay so at that time a speed of the mobile phase and first single piston pump with slow filling cycle at that time their slow rate 
okay so next third cycle is the c c is the dual piston pump with the rapid filling cycle and operate near about 180 degree out of phase okay so this is the representation of reciprocating pump okay so single piston pump and dual piston pump okay this is the difference a is the single piston pump slow filling cycle okay at that time the rate will be slow and then single piston pump single piston pump with rapid filling at that time flow rate is the high as compared to first and then dual piston okay dual system in this rapid filling cycles and operate near about 80 degree and out of phase okay so this is the representation of solvent flow so advantages of this pump <coughs> solvent flow pump have small internal volume near about 35 to 400 microliter and maintain high pressure output near about 1000 pascal or 414 uh, bar and the adaptability is gradient elution and large solvent capacity and constant flow rate okay so in this constant flow rate is most important for our elution okay so this constant flow rate depends on the resolution of our component so largely independent of column back pressure and solvent viscosity so next is the pneumatic types pump here diagrammatically represent pneumatic type pump in this here non return wall and non return wall in between okay so in this pump the mobile phase is driven through the column with use pressure produced from the gas cylinder okay so this pump mobile phase is driven through column with the use of pressure produced from gas cylinder okay and then it is limited capacity of solvent and due to solvent viscosity back pressure may develop okay so and then this maintain the constant flow rate of the solvent in our mobile phase sample injector system okay so there are three types of sample injector system several injectors devices are available either manual or auto injector of the sample first is the septum injector and second is the stop flow injector and third is the rhodine injector okay so first septum injector is old process and this is uh, <coughs> lower limited use nowadays highly rhodine injectors are used okay so more popular rhodine injector okay so these are the three types of sample injector system okay how many types of injector system there are three types septum injector stop flow injector and rhodine injector so first septum injector okay these are the use injecting the sample through a rubber septum okay and kind of injection cannot be commonly used okay since the septum has withstand high pressure so so that's why injector cannot be commonly used because at a same time <coughs> uh 
high pressure apply at that time these are not applicable so next is the stop flow method okay stop flow method means if we have to need a inject sample at that time stop pressure may be stop okay so in these types of flow of mobile phase is stop for a while and the sample is inject through a hole wall okay so mobile phase is stop for while a the sample is injected through wall okay this is the stop flow method second riodine types injectors okay this is the most popular injector and most of the instrument these techniques are used okay riodine riodine types of injector okay so out of three this riodine injector is most important it is the most popular injector and is widely used okay so this has fixed volume of loop okay so this is increase the importance of riodine injector okay so holding sample until the injected into the column like 20 microliter to 50 microliter or more than okay so this types depends on our system so through an injector the sample is introduced into the column and the injector is position just before the inlet of the column okay this riodine injector position just before inlet the column okay so next is the this sampling loop of elc okay these different types of sampling injectors are used in which this is most popular and this is the sampling loop for elc here represent okay in which uh, load sample here injected sample and then from the pump means in column this is the different knob walls selective uh, selection wall load piston positions and inject position okay there are different here hplc auto injector okay so in this auto injector automatically samples are inject in the system or column so here there are different types of columns are used in <coughs> hplc there are two types of columns are present in uh, yes, instrument of hplc first is the pre column and second is the analytical column okay so these two different uh, columns are used for different purpose so pre columns are used as a uh, uh, transfer only solvent or only mobile phase and then um, second analytical in this we use for anal analyze uh, analysis purpose so first pre column pre column it consists pre column it consists packing chemically inert material okay to that is analytical column okay so it contain packing chemically inert material so it's chemically identical to the analytical column so mainly used to remove the impurity from solvent pre columns most important for remove the impurity from solvent and thus prevent the containing uh, contamination of analytical column 
so it can protect analytical columns so next is the it is also called as guard column okay pre column also called as a guard column or protective column also so it is having large particle size as compared to analytical column okay means stationary phase we use a large particle size in this column so it is having short length near about 2 to 10 cm it is short as compared to analytical column so does not after uh, affect the shape creation so next is the analytical column okay analytical column is success to failure of analysis <coughs> analysis depends on choice of column okay so most important factors the affect analysis or success or failure of analysis is depends on the choice of column okay and this length is depends on our types of analytes actual separation is carried out in this column okay analytical column actual separation is carried out okay so next is the stainless steel or steel tube are generally used okay so this is able to <coughs> sustain a high pressure okay so load the high pressure and size length size and length near about 25 to 100 cm analytical columns high, uh, size and length near about 25 to 100 micro uh, cm and internal diameter id near about 2 to 6 mm okay so this column is filled with small particle size as compared to pre column pre column is higher particle size and uh, here analytical column has a lower particle size near about 5 to 10 micron okay solid supports can be used as a silica gel or sometime use a alumina so the separation of result of different components to the diffusion into packing <coughs> particles when this mobile phase is forced to the column okay so separation result depends on the particle size of <coughs> stationary phase so next is the in this stationary phase we use a different types of solid material such as c8 and c18 columns are considered as example of reverse phase liquid chromatography rp okay in rp use a c18 or c8 types columns are considered as a reverse phase liquid chromatography in reverse phase chromatography so next is the stationary phase here here stationary phase is seen a thin film of non polar phase that has been designed to chemically similar to the inert material of silica and this stationary phase is depends on the our analyte okay so what types of stationary phase use is uh, last lecture we are discuss on the types of methods okay so now here just discuss a the non polar layer is chemically linked to the silica particles and surface reaction with the polar silanol group silanol group means silicate hydroxide of silicates on the stationary phase surface and the rending <coughs> them less polar or non polar difference between the two columns will be in length carbon chain attached to the silica surface okay so these different types of materials are used in this column 
so here detector so many types of detectors are used and the particular detector has particular function and detect the particular types of complex analysis okay so here absorbance uv visible and pda types of detector okay refractive index types of detector detects the change in turbidity okay turbidity check at that time we use a refractive index and we detect absorbance at that time we use a uv visible types of detector next fluorescence types of detector these detectors are used for analyze is fluorescent okay these detectors is mostly uh, drawback all analytes are not fluorescent that's why only fluorescent components can be analyzed in this fluorescence detector okay so next is the electrochemical electrochemical it measures current flowing through the pair of electrodes on which potential difference is imposed due to oxidation reduction reaction okay so at that time we use electrochemical detector and last conductivity okay so in this conductivity these types of detector use in detection of different types of ions like organic or inorganic types of ions light scattering detector okay so then mass spectrometry detector hplc ms like gc ms types of detector okay so mass spectrometry detector hplc and ms hplc high performance performance liquid chromatography first separate the component and detect its mass okay so these techniques also two techniques combines in this analyte <coughs> instrument so selection of detectors selection of detectors is depends on our uh, types of components okay so there are different types of detectors and uh, types of components can be detected first uv versus uh, uv visible and pda types of detectors we use for the compounds with chromophore such as aromatic ring or multiple alternating double bond at that time we use a uv visible and pd types of detector next is the rf types of detector rf radio frequency or uh, these detectors we use for fluorescent component usually with fuse ring or highly conjugated planar system at that time we use a rf types of detector so next is the <coughs> next is the cd cd types of cdd types of detector and change components such as inorganic ions and organic acids uh, that's compounds we use a cdd types of detector next is the ecd detector these detectors are used easily oxidized compound like quinoline etc okay so last detector is rdi and elsd types of detector these types of detectors are used for the components that do not show characteristics and other detectors example polymers saccharine uh, saccharides etc okay so the selection of detectors is depends on the our type of compounds present in analytes okay so <clears throat> these different types of detectors are used in hplc so second types of hplc detector okay so in this uh, types of hplc detector there are advantages and dis disadvantages of particular detector first is the uv visible types of detector they advanced advantages work all 
molecules okay so disadvantages non specific complex sample absorption wavelength okay some complex are uh, not absorbs uv light visible so that's this is the another types of drawback or uv detector second dad types of detector dad types of detectors it works all wavelength okay this is the advantages of dad types of detector and disadvantages <coughs> its techniques is high, uh, old uh, high loaded okay lod second fluorescent types of detector okay very specific and low lod okay and disadvantages not everything fluorescent means all components are not fluorescent in nature so ir types of detector it works all molecules but many solvent ir active many solvents are ir active so that's why this is the one of disadvantages second refractive index types these works nearly nearly all molecules and these temperature sensitive okay scattering types of detector uniform response near about 5 uh, ng uh, to 25 ml loading okay so non specific interference from the solvent then electrochemical commercially available only and non specific high lod and mass spectrometry its low loading and analyzes identification ability to ionize molecules so fragmentation takes place in mass spectrometric detector so ideal detectors properties what is the ideal detector properties okay so first what is the ideal detector in this high sensitivity universal uh, you uh, universality and predictable specificity okay large linear response range low load l volume non destructive continuous operation reliable and easy to use no signal detector uh, fits all the criteria no single detector fits all these criteria okay so this is the points of ideal detector properties so next is the uv visible types of detector okay so in this uv visible detector uv visible they absorb the light okay so widely used in detects large number of compound because most drugs have appropriate structural characteristics for light absorption okay in this light absorption so you use a uv visible particular functional group or particular types of groups absorbs a particular light and they excite so next these use these are useful for aromatic compounds and other types of unsaturated system mostly used in aromatic and unsaturated compound system these are <coughs> classified as fixed or variable wavelength detector okay so flexibility are there so fixed wavelength detector employ filter as a source to provide appropriate wavelength okay so appropriate wavelength at that time we use a uh, filter so many filters are we use in this so next is the most common fixed wavelength detectors are based on 254 uh, nanometers okay most common wavelength detectors such as uv detectors are based on 254 nanometers wavelength 
variable wavelength detectors are employed to the spectrometer to provide a dis <coughs> dispersion of light and selection of any wavelength of uv visible region so this is the diagrammatic representation of uv detector and here refractive index ri detector okay so refractive types of uh, detectors we are used for determine the uh, rf types of detector detection occurs when light is bent due to sample eluting from the column and this read as a dispersed <coughs> disper <coughs> disparity uh, bw two channels okay it is much used analyte application because of low sensitivity and specificity so when solute is the <coughs> sample com uh, component and a refractive index change will be the light beam from detector okay so this refractive types of inductor uh, detectors are used for detection of <coughs> analyte photodiodic types of detector fluorescent detector okay so all compounds are not fluorescent active first light uh, turn off on the <coughs> sample and they absorb light and they excite s1 state and then they transfer light in the form of fluorescence as well as phosphorus okay so this <coughs> fluorometric detectors use a fluorescent radiation emitted by some complex okay so light fall on the sample and then light emitted by some compound uh, some compounds are absorbed and they not excite and they not transfer the fluorescence as well as luminescent light so extraction source pass through the flow cell to photo detectors will monochromatic uh, monochromatic measure the emission wavelength and the more sensitive and specific types of detector okay so disadvantages of this a uh, fluorescent detector this is the most components are not fluorescent in nature and that compounds are not used for these types of <coughs> detector so here represent the fluorescent types of detector here xenon lamp are used for uh, source of light and then they transfer in monochromator they filter the light proper light and they fall the sample and then sample emission monochromator and then photo detector okay so this is the diagrammatic representation of fluorescent detector recorders and integrators okay so this is the most important part of the <coughs> uh, instrumentation of hplc recorder and integrator okay recorder are used to record response obtained from detector okay so recorder used for record response obtained from the detector after amplification if necessary they record the baseline and all the peak obtained with respect dot time okay exact time so retention time can be found out from the this recording but under uh, but area under curve cannot be determine in this <coughs> uh, recorder okay
So next is the integrator, the improved version of the recorder with some data processing capability. Okay, also available. So they can be record the individual peak with retention time, height, width, width of peak and peak area, percentage area, etc. So next is the integrator provides more information on peak than recorder. So next is the recent days computers and printers are used to recording the processing the obtained data from controlling several operations. Okay, so this is the uh, process of recorders and integrator. So here represent comparison between the HPLC and HPLTC. Okay, HP TLC and HPLC. Okay, high performance thin layer chromatography and HPLC. Okay, so <coughs> high uh, high <coughs> high performance thin layer chromatography is the planar chromatography and HPLC is the column chromatography. Okay, so principal base on HPLC, HP TLC is the adsorption chromatography. Okay, so in this HPLC is the based on adsorption as well as partition chromatography. Okay, so this is the most important difference and this uh, HP TLC chromatography is the simultaneous method for test as well as reference material. Here HPLC not simultaneous method for the test as well as reference material direct a separation takes place in the HPLC. So next is the it helps to rapid and reproducible methods it is tedious method. In HT, <coughs> HP TLC, this limited flexibility and HPLC has more flexibility as compared to <coughs> uh, HP LTC. So, last is the determination surface area here, determination of retention time in HPLC. Okay. So next is the comparison between GC and HPLC. So okay, GC is the less uh, resolution and HPLC is higher resolution. Okay, so GC is limited flexibility and HPLC has extreme flexibility. GC determination of volatile compound and HPLC both types of compounds determination volatile as well as non volatile compounds okay so this is the <coughs> comparative study of gc and hplc so next is the comparison okay so Here, uh, this is uh, not included in our syllabus. Okay, so application, so many applications are available. <coughs> we are use a HPLC, such as disc discovery, clinical analysis, protein and forensic chemistry, drug metabolism, environmental chemistry, diagnostic study, cosmetic analysis, determination of green fluorescent protein and structural determination also. Okay, pharmaceutical application purpose use as a HPLC and identification of bile acid metabolic, metabolites are used a HPLC. Also clinical applications uh, use a HPLC okay so so many applications and so many <coughs> uh, 
uh, industries are use HPLC technique for the analysis purpose. So thank you, thank you all of you. Next lecture we are start new chapter. Okay, thank you. Have a nice day.